Welcome to Try with Ping. This is Ping Robert, and in this podcast, we will cover a range of different topics from culture, languages, and underrepresented stories. Join me with a cup of chai and listen to these stories. Hi everyone! Welcome back to Chai with Ping. Today we have a very special guest that we met in India when I was teaching teaching in the university, and he has been a super diligent, hardworking student, probably the most hardworking one I've ever seen.、Um, he didn't do very well in Mandarin, but he definitely pays、um, paid a lot of effort in his studies, and I just love his character and personality. He's very sincere, and I call him a little doctor even before he's getting his doctorate because he just knows a lot more details than a usual student. And so we just kind of bond together when he was doing his master degree, and I was teaching them.、Um, and later he went to Taiwan for an exchange year, came back with like. Dreams and hopes, and afterward, and he applied for doctoral programs in Taiwan, and he got it. So today, we're gonna welcome、uh, him to talk about his journey as an Indian studying in Taiwan, and what are the perks and, and tips that he will bring, and then what are the fun or challenging stories that he's gonna talk about. Let's welcome Madhu. Hey, teacher. How are you? Thank you for calling me. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been knowing each other?、Uh, I guess、six、it should、years. be yes. It's been six years now. Yeah, six years. It's 2014. Since 2014. I know, and then it's just so cool that we still are in touch. And then you actually go to Taiwan, my home country, and study. <laughs> How many years have you been there? It's been four years and six months so far. Including my exchange period for one yeah. semester. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like it? Yes, so far it's so good, and、uh, it's mix of challenges and、uh, a lot of、uh, how to say this and interesting things that I experience.、Mm. Yeah. yeah. Let's、good. let's talk about how you chose Mandarin at a you know your master program and why you chose for、um, doing the exchange year in Taiwan. Okay, so I chose Mandarin because、uh, I wanted to do something different, and my exchange,、uh, sorry, my focus is always on Asia because I think there is so much things to learn about it. And uh, being uh, from India, I understand that we don't understand much of the Eastern culture, that the countries which are east to India, we don't know much. And being Mandarin as one of the important language, I thought. To choose Mandarin to learn it, and、uh, my during my time in masters, I got an opportunity to learn Mandarin with you and、uh, Teacher Zoe over there, and、um, I chose to come to Taiwan also as an exchange because I wanted to do something different from others, and、uh, it was an unexplored domain of students. Uh, so yes, and I'm glad I did that、uh, exchange to Taiwan. I know that at that time you were focusing in most of the,、um, of of course, like Eastern Asia, but also I don't think there was any tied up with China. So I don't think it was an option during your time to go for exchange. Was that true?、Mm. There was tied up. There was some ties up with、uh, the universities in China. Yeah.、Uh, but I prefer to come over to Taiwan uh, because uh, uh, it is still because I know people have been to China and all other places, but no one came to Taiwan before、mm. as an exchange student. For as a language, yes. Yeah.、Uh, but not as an exchange, so I choose to come to Taiwan. Were you the first one from Jindal? Probably if from JSA, maybe I'm the one. But for language, if I know there was a senior from my JSA, he came for ex-、uh, language. But I'm not sure anyone for exchange. Oh yeah, I remember that. And so Arun went for Mandarin studies for a year in Tainan. And so yes, for for your department, you're probably the first exchange student because he just went there for language studies. Language, yes. Yeah. And so, what was your first impression when you arrived Taiwan? 
when we first i still remember when i first landed at the airport everyone looked very same to me i couldn't recognize who is who and uh because it's just so different from where i am from uh it's just it just like i was so confused and uh yeah i'm yeah it was a good experience for me for the first my first impression was that <laughs> you know my when my mom landed in the the delhi airport she said the same thing about you guys <laughs> she's like hey i've seen a lot of like similar faces like louis my husband and i'm like mm, you will see the difference when you're here long enough yeah manu doesn't look like louis i'm pretty sure and i can tell the differences <laughs> so yeah i, I can cuz like louis also say the same thing it's like you taiwanese girls or even guys you guys look so similar i'm like i can say the same thing about other races too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um so you did it for one year as exchange studies and what are the ma- major Oh, uh, uh, sorry. I did it for one semester. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh yeah, my that exchange. was one semester. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, okay. Oh. So how did you feel about that for after one semester? Yes, yeah, it was a uh, good experience. I got a lot of exposure to meet so many foreign students uh, in my university where I'm at present and because i did the exchange at the same place where i am doing my phd now and mm-hmm. uh, it was wonderful experience like hanging out with uh, so many fun you not only know taiwanese culture mm-hmm. but also you know like how lot of latin americans how latin americans behave or how they interact with them europeans uh, africans like from it's a mixed bag of everything it was a good experience i would say So what I heard you're saying it's like you get a opportunity to meet people from around the world that you never got to meet maybe around Delhi. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so after that semester you went back to your master's program and what was the motivation for you to apply for PhD program again in Taiwan? Uh well to, uh, I still I was thinking to be Uh, like to learn as much as i can and somewhere in my mind i thought i'm still not good so i thought i should read more and all mm-hmm. and i thought psc is a good place to improve on one stuff so i thought why not taiwan because i've been here and i would love to be exploring it more because i couldn't do much during my exchange period so yes and it gave me a chance and the application period was still there at that time and i started thinking about it consulted few of the professors in jindal and from my department they encouraged me and i also talked to you and zoid also and uh, they they all encouraged me and i applied for it yeah yeah was dr roger leo there when you were in jindal yes uh yeah. so the day he landed in india was the day i landed in taiwan we landed each oh. other's place for the first time yeah that's right so cuz i was just thinking cuz i don't remember what exactly um the time was but i know that there were actually four taiwanese instructor on campus at one point um yes. i just didn't know if you were there or not uh but i met professor roger on his uh on spring 2015 yeah sorry 2016 2016 spring i'm at in jindal yeah uh, in tc itself yeah yeah so just a little background for for manu he is now studying in uh, national zhengzhi university in taipei taiwan and um He used to learn Mandarin at TEC that he just mentioned. It's Taiwan Education Center, so it's um, around the world that the Ministry of Education from Taiwan that they promote language and culture or, um, in different countries, and it happened to be, um, you know, in our university. So that's how we met. And I'm interested to know um, how. How would you compare India and Taiwan? I mean, like you mentioned, like the food is and the food, the culture, are very different. Can you give me some examples? Uh, food, yes, I can tell. Uh, at first, when I came for my exchange, so it's like a two part of 
all of this is I, because I can see from an exchange student point of view and as a PhD student being here for four years, I can tell in a different tech view of it. So when I was exchange uh, for the food, it was so different for me because back home we eat with a lot of spices. So when I first came to Taiwan, I was I almost cried because the food was <laughs> so different and uh, I was just couldn't gather courage to eat many things ah. like uh, boiled chicken or uh, like a sesame oil chicken broth yeah, and chicken noodles and boiled vegetables. Everything was mostly like too plain and simple to me. Mm, that's so true. That, so that made me lose weight so i was 75 kilo <laughs> and by the time i finished i was around 61 <gasps> and that's like more than 10 kgs you lost yeah, yes in four or five months i lost like more than 10 kgs and when i went back to jindal university where i did my where i was doing my masters my friends couldn't recognize me at first yeah and so that was one of them, the f- biggest shock to me as per culture, uh, in, during my exchange period, I attended many activities uh, of different organizations in the, or different uh, groups in the university itself. It gave me to experience uh, the barbecue, which usually happens on the Moon Festival. Uh, a bit, um, what else? Yes, I attended few of the, like uh, some dumpling making uh dumpling making sessions uh like chong is like the rice triangle yeah. things that they do it on boat festival that's and, right and yes a couple of this kind of uh, experiences and also i attended i tried to visit many temples in and around taiwan taipei yeah. city yeah. Uh, each one have their own culture and they have little night markets next to those temples so which is quite unique uh, yes all of this during my exchange was really good and some stories is during my exchange uh was yeah the first meal ever i had in taiwan was first breakfast was the tan ping, like uh, the pancake kind of pancake yeah. so it was a pork Tan ping, like churro tan ping. And <laughs> I was not eating pork at that time. And my friend gave me churro tan ping, like he ordered it for me. And I said, like, can you please remove this pork? And he did help me. And after I finished, I said, what's next? And he said, that's it. And when I said, like, what? Is it over? The breakfast is over? Because it was too small for me. And... Um, I couldn't believe like that's the only like that's the breakfast it is. So if you need, we have to order more again. <laughs> so that's the biggest shocks uh, yeah. that I ever faced, and one of the most funny story ever I had during my exchange time. Did you try doujiang the soy milk? Yes, 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 yes. Did you like, I like it? it? Yes, yes, like it. Ah. Now I like everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let's let's dive deeper in in the food thing, because like I'm interested to know, um, how would you compare Taiwanese food and Indian food? You said a lot of things are too bland. Yes. It's, but like for us, it's pretty flavorful. <laughs> yes, I agree. But uh, I I think you can uh, tell me why I'm saying this because you also lived in India. Yeah. Uh, this we everywhere in most of the Indian food have at least five to six different spices. Oh, totally. And, yes. and that makes the flavor and Indians don't like to eat anything which don't have spices. Mm. So that was I was in my own space. Mm. So during my exchange. So yes. Um, so yes, that's why I think it was too bland yeah. th- at that time. But so, now I can feel yeah. it. So what was the thing that you didn't like, but you you gain the flavor of it and you become like liking it? I think most of the Taiwanese dishes. Uh, mm. I, but during my exchange time, I like Hakka food uh, because mm. it has flavor as compared Salty to... Salty and spicy. Spicy, yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But now I like almost everything. Uh, but sometimes I can't take the pitan. 
พี่ดาน Oh the century egg the century Pidan. egg yes uh, why not it just smells too bad to me <laughs> <laughs> some something like someone calls that like rotten eggs Yes, it's like they said. It's like it's almost like I I I've seen videos on YouTube and um, foreigners eating pi dan and they're like they want to puke. <laughs> and is there so that's one thing, right? Pi dan is something that you try and you still don't like it. Is there anything else? Did you try chou tofu? Yeah, well, I like chou tofu. Mm. It's so good. It's like the more fermented it is, the much better I think. And wow. so I I like chou tofu. I like. Yeah. Uh, duck blood, mm. duck blood. Very so nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep, yep. Yep. Soury and uh, spicy. It's just yeah. the best thing to yeah. have in winter. That's very nice. Uh, like, yep. Did you try? So, like the sesame chicken soup, that kind of thing. So at first you didn't like it. How about now? Yeah. Now yes, but if I have other options, I still try to avoid that right. because it brings yeah. back the memories, and uh, I just don't want to uh, get into it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard Indian students telling me it's like Taiwanese food is more of the original flavor, and Indian food is about how to use different spices with the food, and yes. so you taste a lot more spices rather than food itself. And, yes. Yeah. Did you and, did you eat any like any meat before co- coming to Taiwan, going to Taiwan? Yes, I used to eat, uh, but I never had pork and uh, beef before. But I still okay. don't eat beef. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, pork, yes, uh, that was my first time in Taiwan. Okay. You were gonna say something? Uh, sorry. Um, yes, I remember my friend during my exchange. She took me to a place, to Japanese place. To try sashimi, and um, it was me first time seeing raw, fresh food on the plate, and it took me at least 15 to 20 minutes to accept how to eat, and <laughs> everyone in the restaurant was laughing on me because, <laughs> and it you happened in first, yeah, yeah, you were the only international student in there, right? Yes, and <laughs> it it took me a while, and the next day I had very bad stomach. Uh, because of this and even now I can't eat sashimi because mm. each time I eat I have a lot of troubles yeah. with my stomach yes mm. okay that's mm-hmm. pretty cool and so but any cooked seafood is fine yes any cooked seafood is fine because I back home in India I will live very close to the sea so we eat a lot of seafood yeah well that's just something a lot of taiwanese wouldn't know they they just thought every indian are vegetarian but mm-hmm. what do you have what what do you usually explain to them um i would say it's just uh different from yes indians like to eat vegetables a lot uh and most of them are vegetarians also but at the same time people who are on the coast like me uh we eat a lot of seafood lot of fish and um, like shrimp crabs a lot of different seafood uh, let's say uh, sea sea based fishes fish from the sea we eat a lot of them and uh, we are vegetarian yes in on some particular days and particular times yes and back home in my home we don't eat meat for four days a week and mostly we try to eat meat or anything non-vegetarian during lunch because it's, we think uh, it's not we need to have some balance between meat and vegetarian food yes i have a question which is a very yes. typical question that most taiwanese will also ask um yeah. or, or not even just taiwanese because here in the u.s a lot of people still assume that indians a lot of or almost every indian don't eat beef how would you mm-hmm. say about that? I would say beef is more about personal choices rather than any, like, yes, people have given it a religious angle to it. I can't, I can't comment about it because I don't know about that part. Uh, but for me personally, we were farmers before and uh, we had cows 
uh, in our home and we have taken care of it like our own family member so for me eating beef is more like eating someone from my own family so i think uh, and they have helped us in farming um, and we get milk and we where we make paneer the indian cheese a lot of things so and we take care of them like a, our own baby would say so it's very hard for us to eat beef most yeah. of the years. yes yeah you so don't it, eat your pet right <laughs> yeah you don't and then eat your especially pet. they work for you so do, yes. do you know there are a lot of family in taiwan also don't eat beef because of yes. that that farming culture and tradition Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Many of my friends don't eat beef as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a lot of them, they are just from like uh, more of a farming background. So that's also yes. the same reason that you guys don't eat beef. Yes. Cool. So mystery soft. A lot of Indians <laughs> still eat beef and that that's a personal choice. And so I'm just interested to uh, move forward to like, I know that you have been promoting Indian culture in Taiwan. Um, so what do you usually do? Okay, so I've been here for a while. So I try to give back to the society because Taiwan has been giving me a scholarship. So I thought it's my duty also to let people know about it. So when I got, went to some schools at first, I found it uh, that uh, there is lack of uh, I'd say experiences and also lack of understanding about many things in India. For example, why Indians eat with hands and why Indians speak in English with each other, um, or why uh, are all Indian food is spicy, or are all Indians are vegetarians, or some things like that. So I try to speak this kind of things to the students, and because uh, when they are young, if we tell them from a very young age they will develop curiosity and once by the time they grow up or they they will have enough time to explore more or they won't be shocked to know something very which is very different from Taiwanese culture so this is what I have been trying to do in time so far yeah. how do you get in touch with those schools or classes or even teachers because it's like you I imagine that you as an international student in in Taipei and I just cannot imagine that I will get in touch with a local school. How did you do that? Okay, so at first uh, there was a program by the Ministry of Education of Taiwan, which is called uh, Taiwan Education and Experience Program, TIP. Uh, so we here with the government had encouraged us to go to rural schools in and around Taipei to give some speeches or uh, about or share our culture to the students and get involved with the students in their own culture uh, so that helped me and and slowly and slowly so there is a concept called guanxi in chinese right so it's all about connections so and therefore the connection got developed and many more teachers started to invite it invite me and uh, there were a lot of platforms i try to um, put myself as advertised myself, like such as Couchsurfing, a lot of, of groups, Facebook groups. So slowly and slowly I got involved into this and I got more invitations and started sharing. So usually those schools will hire you for like almost like a one-time lecture or a workshop and they pay for everything? Is, is that how it goes? Okay, so not uh, so they don't pay me. Like I would say, ninety-five percent of the time, I don't get paid for this. Uh, so at the beginning, I used to mostly focus on the places near to Taipei because it would. It's very easy for me to go. Uh, but as as to as my connections grew, uh, more and more schools from outside of Taipei invite me. So I started, uh, and it costed me a lot of money. Uh, so I then I started asking like if they can pay my transportation fees and some schools they said yes they agreed and uh, that's how I was able to go there and many schools from rural areas they don't have funds to give as a lecture fees so usually they can't but somehow the teachers helped me to get my transportation money at least. 
wow, I respect you for putting so much effort and time for our <laughs> future generation, even though they're not my kids. But like, I really see that you have a big heart to contribute in that and also promote your culture. And, and it's just so much needed because I have been uh, focusing on, you know, knowing all the news uh, about education in Taiwan. And I know that rural schools and it's like everywhere in every country, um, rural schools are are under underfunded and under resourced. So thank you so much for doing that for for the kids in my country. And thank you. were it's you my yeah were you coming back from Kaohsiung also because of the uh, voluntary workshop or yes yes uh, I went to uh, Taitong actually Dawu in Taitong. So I was transiting from Kaohsiung, in the southern city of Taiwan. Uh, the financial center, as they say, it, uh, of Taiwan. And um, yes, the school I went, it was very unique uh, because uh, they have very, it's an Aboriginal sc student school, most of them. It's from the Paiwan tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the student, before I went there, the teacher said that the students are happy. When I asked why, because the students were telling the teacher that, um, like like us the teacher the guest lecture like that is me is also of we all have the same skin color so they have nothing yes. to worry about <laughs> <laughs> that is right for those people who don't know taiwan that much there are at least 14 tribes of uh, aboriginal tribes in taiwan and usually they live on the east coast um of taiwan so that's where you went like taidong that's like almost like a hub of aboriginal people and yeah a lot of them are having darker skin and they they also speak a bit different uh, from from us <laughs> Chinese ethnic um, groups but uh, wow that is so cool um, what are the fun experiences that you have when you go to um, these schools um, the, well, the fun thing I would say is more like how you interact like the uh, the excitement of going to a different school like organizing so much I really thank the teachers and uh, the students for their patience uh, for inviting me uh, and uh, it's just the fun and the way the questions you come from the students usually you hear like why do Indians shake heads it's a lot such type of questions and uh, it's something it also helped me to experience and try to develop myself there are many things which I didn't know about India itself but some questions which I faced helped me to do research on those topics it helped me a lot to know my own country also so this is the most exciting part i would say and then you see in taipei uh, most of the schools i've been here to taipei is they're like well advanced have super smart tvs um, like very high technology a lot of uh, opportunities for the students to get to it but the school that i went yesterday they don't even have a air conditioner in the school so this brings the big uh, differences that I was able to see. And I think there is a lot more we can do for such schools. Uh, yeah, it's the fun part. Well, your words definitely touched me. There's a lot more that we can do for the kids, um, especially in rural areas. And thank yes. you again for what you do. And it's just like, I feel that from your stories, it's also like, not many people would know because like local students wouldn't know what exactly international student would do and we don't even hear about the the TEEP um, program and I'll put the information in the episode notes if anyone is interested in that. Um, so I am also interested to know what about your social life in Taiwan? How, how do you build that? Um. So usually in Taiwan, Taiwan, I would say is one of the best places to go biking. Uh, so I joined some of the groups, student groups, uh, clubs. Uh, so I enjoy biking on weekends for long rides or even for a short ride. And my university is right next to a riverside bikeway. So I usually do spend most of the time there on evenings or mornings whenever i have time and other time of social life i usually don't have because i spend most of the time going to schools here and there so my time goes in trains bus stations waiting for transportation or 
yes this is uh, yeah, yeah mostly it's like this yeah how has your doctoral program um been for you yes it was quite challenging because <laughs> tell uh, us more why is it, is it challenging it's that's many things is because uh, at first we have to do a lot of classes uh, like 10 classes and it, the readings are quite heavy and this is something which i was not used to it uh, i thought i could learn chinese properly after i come here to taiwan from the beginning of my phd but i couldn't i couldn't do i attended three classes but then i quit learning chinese because it was just became too much uh, for me and uh, um, yes and and then you have a lot of requirements to do like you have qualifying exam that you have to prepare for and then the uh, exams such as like conferences your journal articles publications that you have to take care of uh, but i'm lucky enough uh, my supervisor don't push me too hard on the, on this but yes uh, i finished my uh, thesis draft in march but uh, it's still not been accepted yet for the final defense so i hope sometime next semester it will get accepted yeah yeah and i just want to mention that manu has received got selected and received an outstanding moe ministry of education scholarship student award of 2020 woohoo how did how how did that happen uh, honestly i never thought i will get this uh, award thanks first uh, but um, somehow one thing went to another and i don't know how they came to the government and the school actually the NCCU they nominate me for this award so out of all the MOE students uh, around Taiwan who were supposed to graduate in 2020 uh, they nominated me and uh, I told them I gave them a report the schools I've been to and the work I've been doing since four years and I think they they thought it's something worth to be appreciated so i uh, they the judges selected me and uh, i think i will be getting that soon yeah what would they give you uh, i think a certificate <laughs> just just a piece of paper <laughs> uh, well i never expected also that so it was True. very something which is very surprising to me yeah. and uh, i think yeah, it will it will help me to go and try more schools. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I I think you deserve it because it's just, you spend so much time and effort, and and I hear that you also kind of push yourself to learn about your own country, your own culture, to be the ambassador, like student ambassador of India. Yes, yeah, and so. I know it has been frustrating and challenging for your doctoral program, but I do want to ask and end on a very good note. What do you plan to do after you graduate when you get your PhD? Okay, so I plan to become a teacher, like a teacher. If I want to become a teacher, I would love to be a teacher in somewhere in the eastern part of Taiwan or in central part of Taiwan in some rural schools itself because uh, if I can in the schools like a junior high or senior high uh, that is my first time I think that's because of all these experiences I think the schools can there are a lot of things I can help the students to know and I think being in Taiwan and being in Taipei and having a PhD I can and knowing so many foreigners I can bring a lot of experiences to the students and i want to develop this part of seeing the world and so i don't want the students to uh, feel bad that they didn't have a proper guidance or uh, a lack of opportunities i want to give them opportunities through my experiences and through my contacts this is my first time which i hope i can uh, if not i want to be a professor in university yeah uh, in yeah yeah that sounds very promising. I just, I'm, I'm not sure because you have a PhD. I'm not sure um, the school systems will, will know how to use your expertise, especially you study international um, affairs, right? 
And yes. what, what is your topic for your dissertation? So in, for my dissertation, I'm focusing on the role of mediators in ethnic peace conflicts, okay. ethnic conflicts. So yeah. I'm comparing two cases, one in Philippines and one in India. Okay. So yeah, on peace mediation. Yes. Yeah. I can definitely foresee that you will be working in higher education and bring a lot more impact for um, school systems. And I really hope that you can stay in Taiwan. Are you planning to stay to. in Taiwan? Yes, if and also to learn Chinese and Thai. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe find a life partner. <laughs> Is that yes, your plan? That's, yes, that's the that's in my plan. That's in my yeah. bucket list. Yeah, you see, like at the end of the episode, I can I can help myself. I'm just being a nagging mom and lao <laughs> shi. Yeah, and uh, I would also like to share that on July 29th, mm-hmm. next month on July 29th, yeah, I will be finishing my speeches. Mm-hmm. All across type one, yeah, every single county, except Chinmen, Matsu, uh, Orchid Island, and Green Island. Just oh, okay, so not these islands, but like within Taiwan Islands itself, you already yes. finished every county. Yes. Seri- How many counties are there? All thirteen, everyone, everyone, oh. each one of them. I will be finishing. So next week I'll finish in Nanto. That was yeah. so. Last week I finished in Taitong. Yeah. Uh, the coming weekend I'll go to Lugu in Nanto, which That's will again awesome. take a lot of time. So yeah. So yes, yes, I'm trying my best, whatever I can. Yes. Wow, I'm pretty sure that you're already building up um, your expertise, and this is almost like an internship, right? It's like even though you're not getting um, a full time or half time paid, but this will be valuable experiences and. Thank you so, so much for sharing all your experience in, in Taiwan as an international student from India. And um, if our listeners have questions, how can they find you? Uh, they can find me. I have a public uh, uh, Instagram account, which okay. I use to co- connect with the students from the schools. Yeah. Uh, also, so they can find me over there. Sure. Yeah. So I will definitely attach that to the episode note. And thank you so much. And we hope... Uh, if the listener has more questions, you can write in and then maybe we can invite Manu again to talk about his educational experience in Taiwan or in India. So just let us know. Thank you so much, Manu. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation.